medicine, the point, the goal of medicine, right? The goal of medicine during antiquity is to recognize what? The nature of opposites, right? So the first thing is a recognition of the nature of opposites. Right? The first thing is a recognition of the nature of opposites. And I'll talk about that uh, in a second. The second thing is medicine and physicians are charged with reconciling these opposites. So, and I, I'll give examples of this in a second. The first is an ability within the sort of um, neophyte, fledgling, apprentice physician to learn from his mentor how to determine, how to recognize opposites in the world. You can't be a good physician during antiquity if you don't have an ability to recognize opposites. And I mean, this goes back to the pre-Socratics, right? It's love and strife. The difference between love and strife, the creative and destructive forces are the forces that create the world, destroy the world, are equally the forces that make you well, they, that make you sick, right? So recognition of um, the nature of opposites is the first, is the first rule. The second rule, and I'm not, ex I'm not saying that these are ex exhaustive, but this comes directly from the text and of, I've cited um, within the Platonic Dialogues, the sections in which Eryximachus justifies it, so you can cross-reference it yourself, right? Reconciliation of these opposites. So the first is a recognition, R-C-O-G, and the next is a reconciliation, R-E-C-O-N-C. Reconciliation of these opposites. Okay, first the physician has to be able to recognize opposites. Then the physician needs to be able to use whatever technological um, technological means he has at his disposal uh, at his disposal to facilitate in the reconciliation of these opposites. And then lastly, something that we wouldn't think is at all in any sense. You might, in a contemporary sense, buy one and two. Um, the average person wouldn't, and I'll talk just briefly about number three because it's, it is a little out there and it will take me off of the medical ethics um, focus of this lecture series. But lastly, the cosmological nature of medicine and its relationship with the divine. Right? So, right, the cosmological nature of medicine. Uh, basically, because I'm not going to talk, talk about the second, the third one, for obvious reasons, because it, it'll take me into a, another, another path, and I want to stay true to the the emphasis and the goal of the lecture series, which is understanding medical ethics, um, both in an analytic sense and in um, an attempt to describe and articulate how we can define the relationship between the physician and the patient throughout philosophical history. The first thing to recognize is that, well, there was a belief during antiquity that we are products of a much broader nexus of interactive forces. I'm going to keep it super simple, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. If we have an imbalance in our systems, if there are opposites in our systems at conflict, that conflict in antiquity didn't just affect the health of the individual. It wasn't just the case that the physician was charged with, sort of in a, in a contemporary sense, helping you get better. No. The physician facilitated a much more divine calling, if you will. The physician was responsible to help you get better, not just, to, not just for your sake, but for the sake of the cosmos. Because if that instability builds too much, and I mean, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, um, to, because I like, as even the most outlandish claims, which I don't think that this is, but even the most outlandish claims, there are some roots of truth in it. To be fair, think about um, the profound inability for people, even in the 21st century, to take um, mental health seriously. People don't really have good measures in place to assess mental health within the population and mental health is something obviously it's medical 
uh, and I do mean like mental health in terms of PhD psychology and MD psychiatry, both, right? But mental health, the, the Cho killing in Virginia Tech is a perfect example. There were warning signs there. People had seen that there were, there were imbalances and, you know, but the, there weren't mechanisms in place to prevent that, to return balance to his mental sort of instability. Think about the cosmological scope of destruction, the grand scope of destruction with, relative to the earth that someone like Adolf Hitler was able to accomplish because, some might argue, I, this is, I'm just throwing this out there, right? I don't particularly believe any of this, but it's just to give credence to the argument. Uh, it's not that outlandish, is, the, is my argument. I'm trying to justify, I'm trying to defend point three, this cosmological role of the, the physician. Imagine if the physician, this is obviously not a biological per se doctor, though it can be a psychiatrist, this is more of a mental doctor, if you will. Imagine that the psychiatrist, the psychologist meets uh, a fledgling young Adolf Hitler and is able to intervene, right? Um, they can bring balance, mental stability back to the patient. And insofar mental stability is brought back to this particular patient, think about how many millions of people's lives are saved in the process of bringing stability to this person, right? So that the, the calling of the physician, the calling of the medical practitioner isn't, in point three, just to bring balance and reconciliation to the individual person in, in a very, and it would be interesting, uh, you know, I want to go off on a tangent because I know African religious, traditional African religious theory, and one of the main points, if not the main point of um, traditional African religious theory is balance. Individual moral agents in the world are charged with bringing balance to the cosmos, making sure that everything is in balance. Obviously, in Asian tradition, there is a huge discourse on balance, right? So this notion of balance is, you know, if I was doing a uh, Joseph Campbell um, lecture, which I cannot wait to do this lecture, if I ever get time to do this lecture, um, Hero of the Thousand Faces, it would take me forever to complete that book. But the idea is that this narrative of returning balance to the universe to the cosmos is a theme that runs throughout human history. Right? It's a theme that runs through, throughout human history, and that's absolutely undeniable. Right? So the physician was charged with recon reconciling opposites, but not just opposites in the biological body. The physician was charged with reconciling opposites within the cosmos. Seems a little out there, but hopefully my, uh, my example serves as a good demonstration. Um, so that was number six. All right, number seven. Um, thus, as an example, from what I've just stated, it, um, if it was assumed during antiquity that these three factors, reconciling, um, um, identifying and recognizing opposites, reconciling opposites, and bringing balance to the cosmos, were the purpose of medicine, this is what medicine was constructed to do, then the physician would always have to act in accordance with this purpose. The purpose of medicine is to do this. Thus the physician, acting virtuously in antiquity, had to do this. If you were a physician, and what you sought was to bring discord, to bring a state of disequilibrium within your patient, well, you're clearly not practicing your, your medical ethic appropriately for the time. Right? Now we recognize that, no, maybe certain states of, because of contemporary medicine, we might recognize that certain states of um, disequilibrium might be good for certain, certain ailments, what have you. It's not universally the case that everything should always be balanced equally. What does it even mean for it to be balanced and blah, 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 blah. Then, during antiquity, the, the assumption is, and the way in which medical physicians were expected to conduct themselves, was to utilize and to incorporate these themes and let these themes determine the way, condition the way in which they acted in the world. Similarly, in a contemporary setting, contemporary medical physicians are charged with upholding the Hippocratic Oath. They are charged with the, um, charged with the responsibility to make sure that they always act in accordance with promoting the best interests of the patient over and above any sort of leaps or strides or insights that the scientific community might make. We'll talk about huge um, injustices that has happened in that regard 